Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I am Thiri Vijay Tunga, and this is a co-author paper. Uh, I have done this uh, as a part of my monogamy research, and this is a literature group, uh, together with uh, V.U. Jaisinger and J.D. Viraratha. My topic today is using scaffolding to enhance ESL speaking motivation at undergraduate level. When it comes to ESL uh, learning and teaching process, the English uh, language is basically divided into four components. This, that is uh, reading, writing, speaking, and listening. But uh, when it comes to uh, listening and speaking, less uh, less recognition is given even in the Asian context because most of the time the students are exam oriented uh, in the Asian context because uh, they only focus on reading and writing skills uh, as they uh, want to fulfill a socio-economic necessity according to Kanika Raja in 1993 he has proven this in studies and uh, Pereira in 2010 has also mentioned that uh, due to this problem Students become anxiety driven and taciturn uh, when they pass out uh, of the uh, pass out from the uh, uh, schools and enter the university. And even uh, in the university, they, they, they do not excel in their standards in speaking. And so, by the time they pa pass out from the universities as graduates, they remain the same. They become incompetent communicators when English is concerned. Uh, even though many instructors have expressed their frustrations to find the reasons for this reticent behavior. Uh, and work on suitable strategies to help students, nothing has come out so far as solid evidence. So uh, that has been mentioned by Sue and Bo in 2013. The aim of this research uh, is to identify uh, uh, or to point out the importance of the theory of scaffolding by Bruna and to suggest the importance of using scaffolding as a solution to this problem. So uh, first of all, I want to explain what scaffolding is. Uh, it is the process, uh, the process of scaffolding uh, is uh, where the teacher helps the student to master a task or concept that the student is initially unable to grasp independently. The teacher offers assistance with only those skills that are beyond the student's capability. So with the assistance of a teacher, a lecturer, a well-known other or a peer, one should be able to achieve a better standards or heights. Uh, according to uh, Jeremy Bruner, he explains that scaffolding refers to the steps taken to reduce the degrees of the freedom in carrying out some tasks so that the child can concentrate on the difficult skills he or she is in the process of acquiring. Uh, there are various interpretations for scaffolding, and I don't want to go into detail about these things, uh, but uh, Virgin and Virgin in 2011 points out uh, saying that scaffolding occurs by breaking down the skill into small units and guiding performance to a higher level. So if you, if one needs to uh, learn and go to a higher level, scaffolding has to be provided. It can be done within the classroom. I want to uh, explain what zone of proximal development is. This is a theory by Vygotsky. Um, and uh, uh, in the first column of the, in the, the white area represents what is known by an independent learner. And uh, the learning process described in uh, the zone of this, the proximal development mentions that these are the skills too difficult for a child to master on his or her own, but that can be done with the guidance and encouragement from a knowledgeable person. So with the guidance and the encouragement by a person who is uh, more prominent, in the uh, subject area, this person, the individual learner, can achieve something greater uh, and reach what is not known. So this is basically scaffolding. I do not want to go into detail about the reports and theories. If I address the research question, um, it is, can scaffolding be incorporated into the ESL classroom to enhance ESL speaking motivation of ESL learners or undergraduates? The objective of this study uh, is to discuss how scaffolding can improve a language learner's motivation and speaking confidence in the ESL classroom when they are provided these three components, peer feedback, constructive criticism, and Q and A sessions. So according to literature, we have found out that by offering these three means, we can, offer, we can uh, assist the learner to uh, enhance uh, speaking competencies within the ESL classroom. So how do we do this? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the methodology comprises of secondary data and qualitative data. First of all, 
constructive criticism. What I mean here are the points for want to improve the existing standards in a language or the subject area. In this case, it's English. Uh, this is the criticism offered to the student or learner, but the criticism offered should not be taken as negative criticism, as in in single we say Vivekanand. It's not that. It has to be uh, the positive, uh, uh, say, the, 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 the comments uh, provided by one person should be taken as uh, uh, a benefit, uh, 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 a means of scaffolding in order to enhance the language. So the teachers have to uh, involve in open dialogue after the presentation in order to do, the, to do so. And now uh, I want to speak something else apart from this slide. Uh, when teaching uh, English, nowadays we use community task-based activities within the classroom. When we are uh, focusing on English speaking, we use communicative task-based activities, which involve role plays, debates, dialogues, drama, and so on. So if we take uh, role playing, for an instance, if uh, when we give a role playing activity to the students, they are given uh, a specific time uh, in order to prepare themselves, and the target for them is to come and present the role play in front of the class. If we give a role play based on controversial issues, such as maybe baby education or something like that, the students are expected to do a good job at the end of the presentation preparations. So after doing the preparations, the teachers and the observers who are observing the presentation should be able to offer a piece of advice, a piece of guidance, or, or point out the weak areas of the, in the presentation. So that the students can master themselves and uh, learn from the comments that they are offering. Um, in Toastmasters uh, International, I hope you all know what Toastmasters International is. It's a, it's a club uh, which improves public speaking competency and skills of uh, uh, English speakers. Uh, they have uh, presentations uh, in every uh, club, uh, club meeting. So after these uh, presentations, there is an evaluator who identifies speech strengths and offers suggestions for improvement. So that is one of the main and key uh, reasons why these Toastmasters excel in their public speaking competence and they build their confidence in speaking. Um, in a research conducted by Stone, uh, he discusses that uh, several studies of scaffolding on teacher-child interactions uh, where scaffolding is found uh, to be very effective. Um, Firestone describes that students should possess uh, new found knowledge through constructivism. Uh, and uh, the students uh, or the learners or the undergraduates uh, should have the uh, knowledge in order to reason out what they are offered as constructive criticism and take advantage from the points made. Peer feedback is a second uh, uh, aspect that I want to focus on as a means of scaffolding and which can be incorporated into the classroom. Uh, this is about cooperative learning uh, which happens within the classroom. Uh, similarly, the example that I took earlier on role playing, on a controversial issue, uh, when the students are engaged in the process uh, of uh, rehearsing uh, the role play, they get together, they work out solutions for their problems. If uh, the students uh, can see their peers making mistakes, they correct themselves and they try to move a step further and do their best. So during this uh, activity, they grow and they improve their standards in speaking and uh, they improve their vocabulary and expressional skills as well. If one makes grammar mistakes, the other student points out uh, what mistakes that he or she has done uh, and then they can correct themselves in a uh, later time. So according to uh, Nam Hyang in 2003, he mentions how the students discuss among themselves and brainstorm ideas and they are generally mentally relaxed among the presence of their peers. Since the peers are able to provide honest feedback, the students are uh, made to feel uh, comfortable mentally and they, uh, they feel very uh, mentally stimulated and motivated present themselves in front of the class. So they get rid of their anxieties, they get rid of their uh, embarrassment when they are asked to come in front of the class and do a presentation. So naturally, they improve their speaking skills. Um, both Lot, in, uh, uh, similar to uh, the previous researcher, Samila pointed out, mentions how activities such as dramas and role plays increase facility to meet changing or unknown stimuli with immediate responses in the students. So when they are practicing, they come across uh, new ideas, they brainstorm their ideas, they learn from their peers. 
as well as they get, they get exposed to uh, uh, situation specific dialogues and conversations and expressions. Um, according to a research uh, done by Shin, uh, explains that role playing is associated with higher frequency of problem identification. So when the students are involved in peer, peer feedback sessions or rehearsing sessions, they identify their mistakes and uh, they uh, move forward uh, by correcting the mistakes. Peer feedback activities engage learners in cognitive interactions of sharing relevant experiences, exchanging ideas, and negotiating meaning. Uh, enabling students to revise their work on the basis of peer feedback include the domain specific skills mentions uh, Sander in 2010. And finally, uh, Gunavardhan in 1997 and uh, Shank in uh, 2008 have mentioned in their research that when receiving and providing feedback, students have the ability to articulate and clarify their own thinking, to build peers' ideas, to negotiate, and make sense of different perspectives. So they learn a lot. The final uh, aspect or component that I want to aspect uh, with regard to scaffolding are uh, Q&A sessions, which also take place after uh, the presentations of the students. So asking and answering questions based on the presentations or any TBA allows the student, oh, sorry, students to be more prepared in their speaking. Say for an example, after this presentation, uh, presentation, this is presentation I am talking. So after this, all four of us will be asked questions from which we are expected to learn. If criticism is provided, we are expected to learn from that also. So that is a form of feedback um, and uh, scaffolding. The preparation process itself is a means of, uh, means of improving ESL speaking because the students uh, expose themselves uh, uh, selves to uh, new vocabulary, new expressions, and they also try to uh, reply or respond uh, spontaneously. So in this regard, they try to do a good job and uh, listen their mistakes in speaking. So uh, this is an excellent way to reinforce a message and continue to sell new ideas and there will be clarifications. Uh, this is as mentioned by Boyd in 2014. Coach Charlotte and Walters uh, further describes this and uh, say that uh, Q&A sessions after a, a storytelling task allow the students to be motivated and work out solutions for their problems in language more competently beyond the teacher's influence. The findings of this uh, research uh, uh, reveal that the eclectic method can enhance this uh, ESL speaking confidence of undergraduates in the Asian context. Eclectic method in this regard means uh, the different approaches which can be utilized in the classroom uh, uh, and uh, be incorporated in the learning and teaching process. The students get rid of their frustrations and fear in expressing the language when they are in front of the class among their familiar peers and teachers. So uh, there should be uh, a free environment for the students to learn and that will benefit them a lot. And uh, when there is a student-centered environment, the students feel free and uh, they uh, feel less uh, anxiety-driven and classical. Uh, these are the suggestions uh, in this research and uh, recommendations. It is suggested that the students should be offered more chances to communicate and learn from their peers. As in, more ta task-based activities or cooperative learning should be uh, involved in the digital classroom. This will enable them to become more self-assured in their communications. Undergraduates should be allowed to learn in a mentally relaxing environment with less influence from lecturers. I would say uh, when the students are influenced over here, when, when the activities are being uh, uh, troubled uh, or intervened by the other parties, they don't learn much. So they have to be they have to be given uh, enough time for them to discuss and brainstorm and grow among themselves, and they will actually grow. Constructive criticism should be offered after oral presentations, which will be, uh, benefit the students to lessen their grammatical, expressional, and presentational mistakes when being involved in speaking activities. And Q and A sessions allow the students to be pre-prepared for the questions asked and enhance the situation-specific language and expressions. These are my references. Thank you very much.